In the olden days, deep within the green hills of Liguria, the she lives hidden beyond sight. If you wander too close, you might feel a strange yearning at your heart, an urge to listen to the sweet laughter of the she. But beware, for even the other fairies tremble in their presence, for the she delights in mischief. Many vanished without a trace, tempted by their whispers, leaving behind only tales of their wrath. Sersha. If I'm not mistaken, you didn't attend the staff meeting today. I'm so sorry, Principal Wilson. I was going to talk to you about it. I got caught up in traffic and... Unprofessionalism. We don't take excuses here at BII. Yes, Principal Wilson. It won't happen again. Principal Wilson. It was two days before winter break at BI University. Everyone was handing in their assignments and leaving for vacation. But the holiday atmosphere suddenly turned grim when Principal Wilson had an unexpected accident on the campus. Sarsha was an exchange student from Ireland. She moved here with her grandparents almost five years ago. And after a lot of hard work, managed to land a job at BII as a history professor. Sarsha lost her parents when she was only three, and it's her grandparents who raised her. After moving to New York, Sersha got an opportunity upstate and decided to move to this small town. But for these past few months, she's gotten more than a little homesick. And she couldn't wait to get back. One ticket to Wellsburg. Sersha looked at her watch. She only had 20 minutes to reach the train station. Would she make it? Stumbling through the swirling snow, breathless as she reached the train station. Just as the doors began to close, she hurried inside in relief. But when she looked around, That relief quickly turned to discomfort. Turned to discomfort. The train was completely empty. Except for her and a strange man. Great. Just what I needed. Sersha picked a seat far away from him, hoping to avoid any interaction. But she could feel his eyes on her, watching intently. Shifting in her seat, she focused on the rhythmic sound of the train as it started to move. In the deep woods, where the light barely reaches, the she hides they look like beautiful people, with skin that shines like the moon and eyes that glow in the dark. 
Their hair flows like water, or some like fire. But if you look closely, just close enough, you can see the grim creeping onto their faces, their sharp teeth, their long and claw-like, capable of weaving magic or grabbing you before you even realize it. If you meet their gaze, you might feel drawn to them, even though you know you should be afraid. So beware, beware. Don't fall for the she's dangerous game, for it can lead you away from the safety of your world and into their mystery of the fairy realm. Sersha closed the book, her heart racing. She glanced around the empty train car, feeling like someone or something was watching her. Just as the man seemed ready to get up, the train doors swung open again, and a young man stepped inside, shaking off the snow. The new guy looked around, clearly surprised to see only her and the strange man. The young man spotted Sersha and took a seat opposite to her, a friendly smile on his face. Hello. Hi. Heading back for the holidays? Yeah, I guess. We're the last few on this train. I'm Ronnie. Sersha. Beautiful name. Beautiful name. Are you Ginger? What a wild guess. As they chatted, Ronnie glanced over at the strange man in the corner. Does he have something with you? I don't know. He just keeps looking over here. Let's ignore him. So where are you headed? I'm actually a professor at BII, going home for the winter break. Really? I've never seen such a young professor. What about you? I'm a collector. Collector? I collect souvenirs. Interesting. As Sersha and Ronnie got talking, the attendant walked in, soon stopping by the strange man. Sir, you're not supposed to put your suitcase in the upper compartment. As the attendant tried to take down the man's suitcase, he stumbled back a little. Wow, that's heavy. I'll do it. The man took down the suitcase in a breath. You think he's a serial killer? What does he have in there? A body? He keeps souvenirs, a hand, a nose, a mouth. Stop scaring me. Can you imagine if a man like that attacks a girl alone? I'll be fine. I always carry protection with me. What? You have a gun? No. A switchblade? No. What, a nunchuck? No. Sasha took out her locket. My grandmother gave me this. That's going to protect you? What is it? Your lord and savior? No. More like my servant. Right. You want to go grab something to eat at the diner? Yeah, sure. Sersha and Ronnie headed to the diner. Settling into a booth and checking out the menu. Just as they were deciding what to order. The 
the strange man walked in and slid into a seat at the counter, ordering a steak. Ronnie noticed. Man, he's desperate. Yes, I'm used to it. It's pretty common at the university. Well, you are a beautiful woman. Ronnie replied with a casual smile. But Sersha couldn't shake the feeling that the strange man was still watching them. They finally placed their orders. When Sersha asked for a chicken salad, the waiter shrugged her off. We don't have that available. Come on, man, for her. I said it's not available. It's all right, Ronnie, leave it. Sersha settled for something else, trying to shake off the awkwardness. But then, a commotion erupted in the diner. One of the customers suddenly threw his drink right at the waiter's face. Wow, Sersha gasped, eyes wide. An argument broke out, the man yelling about his food being cold. I guess he did a good thing, Ronnie said with a wry smile. He deserved that. Have you ever seen the back of the train? No, never. I can take you there. I didn't know we were allowed to go there. Come on, it'll be a nice breath of air. fell down. You are a psycho. <laughs> Bonnie laughed out. Oh, you got me. Oh, you got me. Let's go inside. It's getting cold. I know how you can get hot. Don't touch me. Come on, I think we got a little closer than that. You know something? You're playing so hard to get. I usually don't have to put a lot of effort to get a girl. I think I'm gonna keep a souvenir. Ronnie suddenly took out his switchblade. I really like your lips. Just as he reached out to grab Sersha, a hand shot out from behind, clasping onto Ronnie's jacket and throwing him down onto the ground. Get away from her. The strange man's eyes glowed with an unnatural light. Ronnie now on the floor, stared at him, mortified. The hell are you? He stammered, scrambling back in fear. Without waiting for an answer, Ronnie turned and bolted, disappearing into the train, leaving Sersha alone with the man. Sersha looked at him, breathless. What took you so long? Give me, mistress. Who are you? She. Why don't you 
did you come out? If you look upon me, you would run. Well, I can be a friend. Olga, Sersha's grandmother, grew up in a small Irish village where tales of the she were passed on from house to house. Don't go into the woods, the she will get you. Olga often wandered into the woods, drawn to the ancient mounds where rumored the she hid. One night, she met a she who was enchanted by her. It imprinted on Olga, and she learned to balance her life between the human world and the fairy realm. A strange presence always protected her. And it was to Sersha that Olga decided to pass on her bond. Keep this with you, and you'll never be alone. The she watched over Sersha and protected her. Whenever Sersha needed him, it came to her rescue through those around her. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.